Okay, so let's start uh, uh, seeing some more information about these promises and then try to put them into practice with uh, some uh, uh, more complete example, okay? So uh, a promise object uh, has two main methods that are called then and catch, okay? And as, well, as we were saying before, they are uh, executed well, they're scheduled, basically, to be executed when the body of the promise uh, calls uh, response, uh, um, resolve, or reject, respectively, okay? Catch is a way of uh, handling the error condition and is, of course, called with the parameter that we provided during the uh, reject call, okay? So it's a way of... Uh, of continuing the execution from this point here into uh, this point there, into the, the body of the promise object. But as we saw in our little example, the processing can be done outside the call. So it can be done later, can be scheduled, and so on. Um, there are actually, there's also a third uh, uh, method, which is called finally that if, if we need it, uh, it, it will be called after then or after catch, uh, in both cases, in either case, whether it's failed or it's uh, uh, being fulfilled, okay? Uh, like, uh, it's, it's a sort of, uh, you know, um, copy of the try catch finally syntax uh, for handling exceptions. So instead of having an exception, you are handling um, uh, results uh, that normally the then or try case where you have normal code and the other two branches when you have uh, some, uh, some problem or some error uh, along the execution. The interesting part is that all of these methods, then, catch, and finally, will return a promise object, but the same promise object on which they were called. So if P is a promise, P dot then schedules its own callback and then returns P again. So we can chain this method. Uh, chain uh, p dot then dot catch dot finally on the same uh, on the same line. So we don't need to uh, schedule them in different ways. And uh, uh, if uh, the callback itself, so in this case we have a callback. In our example, we have a callback that doesn't return anything. It just prints something. But if this callback would return a promise itself, then the, res the um, result of then will be a promise that will be resolved by that callback. What I mean is that here I can return a promise and finally write a dot then outside with code that will be executed after the resolution of the first promise. So again, I have a promise that I create inside a callback and uh, another callback that will process the result of the first one and the value will be teleported through to the, by the you know, um, resolve then connection. Resolve will call the then callback and so on. Um, so there are you know, uh, pattern or usage of, of promises. Okay, here we have an example here. For example, get repository. This is some code that we can get to, uh, for automating, you know, querying some GitHub repository. Okay, so you get some information about uh, a GitHub repository, and of course, it will be an asynchronous operation because they, it needs to contact a web server with all the information. Okay, so this function we don't have it, but it returns a promise. So what do we need to do uh, with this information? Okay, uh, maybe we want to get some issues. So when get report information returns, uh, it returns a promise. When this promise is resolved, we call another callback that takes the result of the first one. So remember that the argument of the callback of then is the value provided to resolve. So inside this get repo info, we have at some point resolve with an object that describes the repository. In this then callback, we get that information and we call another function 
that itself will be asynchronous. And it will do something with this information, and it returns a promise that will be will resolve later on. And when this promise, so this get issue returns a promise. Remember, there are no braces here. So what we have here is return. It's a, um, by default, it's a return statement, return expression value. So it's different. Before we had a console.log that didn't return anything. So the promise, there's no new promise to, to, to generate. But in this case, uh, the callback itself returns a promise. So this promise can be chained upon. And if, in fact, we are chaining a second callback on the result of the first one. So we are creating some asynchronous operation. On the completion of this operation, we do another, we schedule another asynchronous operation that takes advantage of the result of the first one. And it returns a promise. And when this promise is finished, it will give you the issue, information about the issue in GitHub. And then you can schedule another operation for extracting the owner of this issue that will return a promise. And with this owner, we can schedule some other operation, which is still a thing, and so on. So you're writing that uh, in four consecutive lines, but you know that the, the execution of this will be spread across a, a longer time. But at least we have everything there. The pattern is that every time you, um, the first time you create a promise, a new promise starting from some, let's say, synchronous information. But after that, uh, you will have functions that process some result of a promise and return a new promise. They must return a promise because they can never return a value. Because when they are, uh, they are executed, the, their parameter, or when, when we are defining them, their parameter is not even existing yet. So we must say that uh, even if uh, you know, extracting the owner ID is a synchronous operation, then the whole result must be returned asynchronously. We cannot run it now. We, we, wait, we must wait until its arguments are available to be able to run it. So it's a, it's a chain of promises. Every time I consume the result of a promise and I return a new promise, they will provide the next result. At the end, I'm doing something really. Okay, send email. And the chain is over, it's finished. So it's an easy mechanism for chaining. And here, when, I, when I'm defining this chain, it's quite clean, the code. Of course, inside get issue, get owner, send email, I have all the syntax for creating new promise, setting a callback resolve, uh, calling the resolve function. Okay, inside, but in, this is inside this function. Um, it's important always to all of these methods return some results because the results uh, will be the promise for which, from which otherwise if, if any of these method doesn't return something we, we cannot change uh, anything else okay so uh, these are some code that we write uh, quite often using promises uh, this is an example of some code that we will write uh, uh, towards the end of the course, uh, when in a web application we, are, we need to get some data from uh, an external web server, and we are using the, the fetch method. Um, today we are using SQLite, and we need to create our promises by hand with a new promise, because SQL, the SQLite library doesn't support promises. It was invented before. Uh, more recent APIs, like fetch, return promises by default. So fetch is a primitive in the library of the browsers, in the standard library of the browser, that will return a promise. And so every time we, need, we want to do with some external data, uh, we chain it in some way. OK? Um, and in this case, status and JSON are functions. They all need to be called back, so you can just define them as functions or just put them in, in line. And uh, uh, there are a lot of methods uh, that uh, um, could also work synchronously. For example, we have a response object that is the response of the, the remote call, which is a body of text. And we want to 
extract uh, an object that corresponds to the JSON representation. We'll, we'll discuss about this when the time comes. So we have just a string, and we need to create an object by parsing this string. This is a normally synchronous operation. But the argument of this operation is asynchronous because it comes from a synchronous operation. And so we see that also extracting, creating the, parsing a string, okay, extracting the JSON object from the response of the body, is done asynchronously. Not because the operation in itself uh, must be scheduled because it involves the input output and so on, but because its argument is asynchronous. And so the operation must be scheduled and it will provide a result, will be, well, it will be again a, a promise. Hmm? So uh, we need to no, get familiar with this way. Um, there are so other ways uh, of combining promises. So in this case, uh, with the secrets of then, the, the then chain of promises, we are creating uh, sequential execution. But what happens if we run many promises, we have many promises and we want to run all of them in parallel? Okay, it's possible. I can create 20 promises, put them into an array, and each of them will have a then method. And so, okay, I can run many promises in parallel, and when each of them finishes, they will call my then callback. But then I need to process them all one by one. What if I just want to know when all of them are finished? Okay? Uh, I want to process the results of all the operations when I have all the results. Not one by one, but when all of them are available. Okay, so for example, there is a the static method called promise.all that will create a new promise starting from an array of promises. A promise is just an object. Okay, you put that create a new promise that will resolve when all the promises in the, in the array, promises in the array are resolved. So it waits until all of them complete. Uh, imagine I'm in parallel running three different queries. Uh, I don't know, the date of the day, the weather, and something else. And I need the, the result of the three before going on. So in the then of, the, of each of the three operations, I cannot do anything useful. It's only a partial data. But when all of them are finished, then I can process the results. So I need one callback to be called after the completion of a set of operations, for which I don't want to enforce a sequence. I don't care. They can, they can go in parallel. Uh, if I want to enforce a sequence, I use a chain of thens. That's okay. But if I don't need to enforce a sequence, and also I, I will be also faster if things, uh, if operations are running in parallel, then I can uh, let them go in parallel. Don't do anything special in the callback of each of them, but wait until all of them are, are complete and uh, use the callback of a composite process, uh, promise composite promise with, that put all of them together. And it does, of course, it doesn't, the, the then callback of this com, composite pro, uh, promise will not have just one value, we'll have an array of value which are all the values resolved by each of the promises that are composed in there. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a way of composing them. Or the, the other solution is just uh, run some operations and uh, wait until the first one completes. So I, I uh, run five different uh, parallel operations. When the first one completes, the first one wins, I do something. The other ones will complete in their own time, but I start doing something right away. It's less useful in this case. But promise us all is, uh, is uh, we are, we were going to use it uh, um, of course, when you are scheduling many promises in parallel, in this case, they should be independent. None of them can be, uh, can, can need the results of another one, of course, because they are totally parallel. Okay, but these are sort of uh, 
advanced uh, um, usages. Uh, so let's try to uh, put everything together, SQLite and, uh, and promises and so on, uh, and try to do some exercise. The last topic for the television in the slides, of course, we had some trouble today. <laughs> with uh, We lost some time. I think a way to, I just mentioned, then we'll, we'll see it next week, uh, it's a simplified syntax instead of uh, then and catch uh, for having a, a, a simple syntax for doing the same, the same thing. So the concept will be the same. The syntax will be much simpler. Okay, but for the moment, let's, let's, let's not make everything together, otherwise we, we, we get lost. Okay, so let's, let's work on the exercise. Uh, the exercise asks us to work on the question and answering project, and this time we want to uh, work uh, with the database, which is the same SQL database that we used in the previous examples, okay? So this one with uh, uh, a, go away, okay. An answer table and a question table. You see that from the point of view of the database design, the answer is a field that is called question ID, that is a foreign key. And uh, of course the question doesn't have any, any list uh, of, uh, uh, of answers because it has one too many relationships. I added, we added uh, one ID field to each uh, of the um, of the tables, of course, to act as a primary key. For the moment, authors are just string, text strings. Um, I, we don't have time to spend on that today, but uh, the, the, you will notice that, that in SQLite, uh, the type system is, is very weak. In SQL, you have a lot, uh, you have bar char, you have uh, uh, dates, uh, you have integer, you have long integer, you have many types for the columns of your database. In SQLite, uh, there's very few types. Basically, they are all number and string. And so you see that there's this strange column type which is called text instead of bar char because it's one type that covers more or less the, um, the needs of the different stringy types of other databases. So it's not really standard as an as implementation of SQL. No? And, um, but it's enough for our purposes. You don't do a lot of fancy things like triggers or things like they're not supported, okay? Okay, um, what do we want to do? Well, we want to implement some uh, methods on some objects. So we, are, we already have the uh, JavaScript objects, uh, uh, sorry, the question object and the answer object. I have a slight modification over the over last week over these two objects because basically I added an ID field into the JavaScript object because when we read some data from the database we will get this information and need to store it and they removed the list of answers for from the question you remember last week we had a question object that contains a list okay right now the list is not in will not be in memory it will be in the database so there's no, no, no sense in storing all that also in the database so I, if we take, if you take the file qna.js, it's just a slight modification of the previous one where I just adapted the constructor of answer and question by adding the ID and removing the list of answers from question. And I also removed all the methods because we don't want to work on the lists anymore. We want to work on the database hmm, for the sake of this exercise. Plus uh, another constructor question list, uh, list that was asked by the, uh, by the text. And uh, I just added this, this statement for loading SQLite. Okay, so it's just a, a clean file to start from. And what does it, what does the exercise ask you, ask you to do? Is to implement this set of questions. From the question object, add answer, get answers, and get the top number of answers. So if I have a question object, I can use the question for querying the answer or, or modifying the answers to that question. 
and for modifying the question itself, so adding a new question or searching a question, I, we create another object called question list uh, that will return question objects or will insert new question objects in the database. So these objects will be volatile. We are just, they only have the result of the last operation or something like that, uh, because the real information will be in the database. Okay, so we want to implement a sort of a library for handling this uh, your basic operation on the database. Uh, the suggestion is uh, of uh, implementing these methods in this order because each one uh, be because it makes it easier to write the text instructions, basically. So let's start uh, from the first one. Que question list dot uh, uh, get question. Ah, okay. So get question is a method here that uh, given an ID of a question we return the information about that question. And this is basically the query that we had before. But we want to implement it as a function that returns a promise, of course. It will, not, it will never return the ID. It, it's, it's impossible, okay, to return the ID. So let's take the QNL file and say inside question list, we want to implement a function, this dot uh, uh, get question is a function that takes uh, one ID and returns the question or the promise that will give me the question at the end. Okay, so this function can, should query the database. So I already opened the database here as the first instruction. So here I can use, uh, define the, the query, const uh, SQL. So I want all the information about the question giving a given ID. Okay, so select everything from uh, question table where the ID is uh, some parameter. I have, uh, I'm uh, uh, making a query over a primary key, so I expect to have one result only. So I could run this query by using db.get. because I only need one result. The big old okay, that takes the SQL string, the array of parameters, which is only one parameter that contains the ID, this parameter ID of the function will be inserted in the placeholder, and the callback. Here we are using the conventions of the SQLite library. So we need to provide a callback uh, uh, error.row. Okay, so the first parameter will be the error, the second will be the single value row. If L do something, as process the row. So if error is not null, then SQLite is telling me we are something wrong. Otherwise, uh, we have the, some row that can, we can return. We don't use return or throw because we are inside a promise. Oh, sorry, we're nothing, uh, sorry, I, I forgot to create a promise. So this is, here we have the error message. to return, and here we have the row to return. Okay, all of this should be wrapped inside the promise. This is the code that we want to execute. But in order to return something in an asynchronous way, all this code should be inside the body of the promise. Okay, and so all of this 
simply return new promise with a resolve and reject parameters of a callback. So what we are doing, we are taking the code that we want to execute and put it into the body of the form, of a promise. So all of this code, we just got there. The same code, but I don't want to execute it synchronously in this function. I will, will be executed inside the context of the promise. And now, we, since we are inside the promise, we know what to do with the error. If I get an error, I reject the promise with the error code. And if everything is, is right, I fulfill the promise, I resolve the promise with the row. Huh? Here is the difference. We don't have to care about what to do with this data. We just have to return this information through the promise resolution mechanism. Again, we have this callback, which is a callback of promise, and the second callback, which is a callback of get. And so we have all, the, all this bunch of closing parentheses at the end. Don't be scared. And how to use this function? Well, we can call it, then we can, at the end of the program, we have some synchronous code to execute this query. Okay, so let's move at the end of the, to the end of the program. Okay, I created a new question list object that contains this method. And let's try to uh, extract uh, the information about question number one. Question list dot uh, get question one. If I had uh, uh, saved this result, this is not the question information. This will be the promise object. So I don't need to save the promise object. I just need to do to, to specify what to do with the promise object. So in this case, I would write then, and we, here we have the row, the question itself. And we want to do something with this question. Maybe just print it for the moment. It should be an object that they print. So the print should be delayed until the query is finished. So let's try to run it. And uh, no such table question. Okay. We have, uh, have a, an, an exception here. Uh, question because it's questions for maybe uh, question or no such table question why not question questions that people like no such table Or there's something I'm not, I'm not seeing. Then try the query. Run. Yeah. 
So inside this code. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Because when I run it, from, I run it from here, and it was running from the uh, upper directory. I was not in the exercise four directory. Sorry, let's uh, close and go to the normal terminal. Node uh, QA. Okay. So right now, what I'm doing here, I'm, so I'm printing the object, the raw object. I can do better because right now I'm just dumping the data which is coming from the database, which is not what the uh, exercise asks because the exercise asked for um, a promise that results to a question. Right now, it, I don't have a question object. I just have a, a row information. So let's change it. I don't resolve the row object, but I create a new question by providing the information in the object. So the first uh, parameter of, of the constructor of a question is an ID, row.id. The second would be the text, row.text. And the third one would be the author. The fourth one would be the date. And uh, that's it, four parameters. We have a question object that we defined uh, last week that contains uh, the same information. I was careful in defining uh, the columns of the table with the same name as the attributes of the object. Okay, so it's easy for me. It's easier for me to use the same name. Of course, uh, ID, text, author, and date here are the names of the columns of the database because they come from the query. And the parameters of question, ID, any, uh, ID text, any, are the attributes of the object. In this case, I kept the same names for my mental sanity. So I can return anything in the result, any object, any JavaScript object, not just the, the row. Okay, so we know that uh, the, the qu this question here will be an object of type question. Okay, this is done. Let's go to the next uh, suggested question. Question lead to add. Okay, let's add a new question. Uh, so inside question list, again, we create another question, or another function, sorry. So this dot uh, uh, add que question. And it receives a question object. Okay. Is a function, sorry, this is a question equal to function question. It will execute this operation asynchronously. Uh, so we return a new promise. Resolve, reject, arrow, function body. Inside the, this promise, we execute the query. Const SQL equal to, so what do I need to do? I need to, in, to create a new question. So uh, insert into question. And then we have the list of fields, if I remember correctly the SQL, the SQL syntax. Uh, the fields of question are ID, text, auto date, okay. ID, text, author, date, values, and we have one row with four values and I put four placeholders. Right? 
fish with the query that I need to run with a run statement. The run statement just executes some updating query, insert or update. First argument, the query. Second argument, the parameters. In this case, we have the four fields of the question that come from the question object that I received as a parameter, as an argument. So it's a question ID. It's a question dot uh, text, uh, text. It's a question dot author. And finally, the date, question dot data. Just beware that data is a DJS object, and in the, in the database we need to store a string. Okay, so I can call to hydro format to hydro string of the JS. Okay. That will give me the string to insert the, in the database. Because otherwise, it would call two string uh, that will print the, the longer uh, representation. Wednesday, 15 of March, and so on. So, uh, of course, the four parameters should be in the order of these four placeholders that should be in the order of the column names. ID, text, author, date. Okay. The third parameter of this run function is the callback. The callback is just a function that only he is only there to process some error. Run doesn't have any result. So if error, if I have some error, then I re reject this promise with uh, the error message or the error object. As there was no error, I can, I can satisfy the promise with the dummy value. And I have no real value to return. I don't know. Ret uh, resolve, you know, true, if you like or one, or zero, or whatever. It's better to pass some object instead of undefined. But and this, of course, will allow to wait until the insert is completed before, before doing something else. Uh, since the add doesn't return any result, we could also forget about all the promises. Let's just run it. It will finish on its own. On its own. Now, we don't need to wait for an insert to finish. OK, maybe in some cases we need, because if you want to do a select afterwards, we need to be sure that that has been inserted. So we use the promise not for getting a result, but for synchronizing the operations. So any result value will do that will help me to schedule the operation. And of course, we need to handle errors. So that they will happen. So if we want to do that, we can try to add the question to our list, question list, dot add question, with a new question. We need to provide an object of type question to this uh, function. Uh, with its parameters, so maybe the number, the question number is three, and the text is, uh, how are you? And the author is me, and the date is uh, today, so it's uh, 2023, 03, 14.
I don't know um, whether this query will be run before or after the other one. Okay, I'm scheduling them together and then they will run independently. If I wanted to be sure that this query would have come after the other one, the only option I have is to put it here, inside the callback of the first one, or better, by chaining with another thing here after the first promise, if I need. In this case, they are doing separate stuff, so they can parallel. Um, just beware, right now we are putting a number here, three. Three should be an, a new number, different from the, uh, the existing one. So something that I often see, maybe in some projects, is that people do a max operation on the table, and then use the max plus one for setting the new number. And maybe they forget to put the insert or the computation of the result after the result of the previous one. Okay, so it's always then we should always think about uh, not only what value do we need, but also when will uh, it be available. But this one should work. I don't have anything special to do with the then, so I'm not obliged to use the then and catch uh, uh, method. This should. Okay, it printed the first one, just as before, and let's have a look at the question list, and now we have question number three. Okay. And if I try to run this program again, I should get an error probably. Yes. Because there's a constraint on the primary key, so I cannot insert a new question with the same ID as the number three that we already have. Okay. Okay. So the, the implementation of asynchronous method, you see that is not difficult once we learn the pattern. The usage is more difficult because then we are calling a synchronous function and we wait for the result that will be. Um, other uh, questions, not get answers. So we have a question object that was probably returned by the get question method, and we want to get the list of answers to that. So the function itself is easy. Get answers inside the question object, this one. It returns a promise that results to an array with all the answers to the question by creating the database. Okay, so we go to the question object, and we have a method for this, which is the get answers. Get answers doesn't need to have any parameters, because it already knows which is the question that we are. It's a method of the question object, so it knows which is the question that we want to query. Uh, answers equal to, sorry, function. Again, it will return an asynchronous value, so we wrap it into a promise, return new promise. Resolve, reject. And then the body. Just to focus, this is the only instruction that we are running here, right? Inside, synchronously in this function call. Everything else is a single. Oh, we need a list of all these. Okay, uh, we need to run queries like uh, const SQL is something like select everything from answer where the question ID is equal to a specific question. So all the answers are relevant to a specific question, right? Uh, 
and this is a query that returns many results. So db.all. It has one parameter, which is the ID of the question. I already know this.id. I am inside the question object, so I know the value of the different fields of the question, and then creating answers. And then we have the callback for getting the results. Error, rows. Arrow, block. So again, inside the promise body, the only instruction is this db.all. And then the SQLite library will work, and then we have the code for processing the results. If L reject L as as a process the rows rows contain zero elements. I need to return an array of uh, um, answer objects. Right now, I have, I have an array of basic objects uh, that contains the columns of the table. So the easiest way is to create uh, an array with the answers by taking the rows and applying a map operation for transforming them. I have an array of objects, and you want to transform that into an array of answer objects, one by one. So map is your friend. From an answer, you create a new answer object. With all the fields. And the fields are id, a.id. The fields is text, a.text, a.auto. A dot score, A dot date. Date, A dot date is read from the database in the form of a string, but the constructor of answer will parse it into the JS object. So when we speak with the database, we need to speak string languages. But inside our objects, we can create real objects that we pass around in our code. And then we can resolve, of course, answers. It's the same as before, with the difference that instead of having one result, we have a list of results. So instead of just returning, return new question, we have to return an array of new answers. And we do that inside the map. There's a lot happening here in very few lines. Okay? So don't be afraid if you feel a bit disoriented. And how can we use this? And we can use it, for example, in, inside this callback. Um, the add question is a method of uh, sorry, add uh, get uh, answers is a method of question. So we need to have a question object uh, called this method. And where do we have a question object? Okay, for example get question will return a question object. But well, return a promise in whose callback I have the question object. So at this point, uh, I can run the question dot uh, get answers of this question. So I'm using the question in the body of the callback. Mm. 
this is the first iteration that we will modify it with chaining in a, mom in a moment, okay? And then what I can do, I can maybe print these answers, okay? It's very stupid, but we can print them in the then, where we have the answers. We can, for example, print them. So I make a hidden query when I get the result. I run a second query. When I get the result, I will print the result of the second query. Thanks to this nesting of callbacks and to this then primitive, I'm sure of the sequence in which these operations happen. I'm still not sure about when this insert will happen because it's a separate. Let's comment it just not to have the exception because you have this three number that creates a conflict. So right now if we run it, we should be able to see I'm sorry for the data, I should create a two string method to sooner or later. I have a question number one, and then uh, uh, an array of answer objects. ID one, ID two, and all of them, ID three, and so on. That are the three answers for that first uh, single question. And we can do the same for question number two, for example. Question list dot uh, get question number two. I know there's a question two right now. Imagine you just want to get the answers. So what you would do is to have, uh, you have the question. And you can chain the result. From this question, you can return question dot get answers. So what we are doing here is uh, we are waiting for the get question promise to resolve. When this is resolved, we run a function that will return another promise for the answers and so we can process the answers here maybe we can go to a new line if it makes it more readable maybe we just write uh, we have uh, the number of answers. Uh, answers uh, dot uh, length, size. What is in JavaScript length? Sorry. Answers without printing all of them. Okay, so I have one result, I need to go one step farther, I take a promise and return a new promise. When I get this promise, I, I do some operation. It didn't print at the bottom, it probably print somewhere before. Sorry, let's get rid of some prints. Let's comment this just to see how it works. Yeah, the answer.length is not a function because it's a property. Yeah, we have one answer of question two.
Okay. We can, the difference between these two is minimal. In the first case, we have a s additional operation on the result of the first promise inside the callback. In the second case, we have the additional operation after the callback, in a second callback, which is much cleaner to read. As long as the first one returns a promise, I can always change something on the result of the promise. Of course, here I can do anything I want, not just calling a function. I can do a bra open the braces and do any code I want, as long as at the end I will return something which is a, a promise object and then I can change. And so it looks like sequential code. It's not sequential code. It's chained asynchronous code. I have many snippets of asynchronous code that are chained together through this promise then mechanism. Which is something we can manage easily. More easy. Uh, next week, uh, we'll see a simple syntax for doing the same thing. So instead of then, I will write await. Uh, they will be more explicitly waiting for the next uh, uh, operation to come. Let me just have a look at uh, whether there's anything. Question.add doesn't change anything. At, it adds an answer to the question. It's the, it's, uh, the same as before, get top after date. Okay, you can play this, uh, there, there's nothing new. There are only variations on what we have. Uh, of course, when if you do the get top, uh, you are filtering the result, but what the only changes are in the SQL syntax. Huh? But the synchronization is the same. We saw the basic three type of queries, insert, get one, get many. Hmm? You can play around with those. Okay? So I think we can stop for today. I don't want to start another new topic. And uh, we'll see you next uh, week. Ah, remember, next week uh, we have uh, um, moved the time and the, and the room. So we'll be, just have a look at the website. Uh, it will be at 8.30 in room uh, something S. In... Uh, 3S here, okay? Because at 11.30, I must be somewhere else. So just remember, put your alarm on early next Tuesday. Thank you.